So we are making shortbread today. I love a shortbread cookie. I like the crispiness. It's a little sandy. It's a little salty. And a shortbread is completely customizable. So I'm going to do a couple of shortbreads today. And I'm going to start with a cookie called the World Peace Cookie. So this is from Dory's Dory Greenspan. This is Dory's Cookies. And this is the World Peace Cookie on the cover of a book. Okay. So she uses a stand, a stand mixer. I'm going to use a food processor. I love using a food processor to make a shortbread cake, shortbread cookie. And um, it works really well and it's convenient. We do this a ton in cooking classes. So what I've got in here is brown sugar, sugar, two sticks of butter. I'm sorry, one stick of butter plus three tablespoons. Our next cookie is two sticks, two sticks of butter. So I've got that in the food process and I'm gonna blitz that up and get it pretty smooth. Okay, I've got a piece of brown sugar in here that's not cooperating. The other thing I wanna do is turn my volume down because I'm driving myself nuts. I've got my AirPods in today and it is confusing me because I've got a little bit of a delay. Ooh, that helps a lot. Okay. So I've got a piece of brown sugar in here that's not cooperating. So I'm gonna bust it up with my spatula. But what's happening here is that typical first step in a cookie where you cream the butter and sugar. That's what's happening just with a, a super fast tool and the blade of the food processor. So here I go again. Ah. So it's going to take a second to catch but you want that butter and sugar to get really, really well combined. So I'm gonna scrape that down again and help it out, but I'm also gonna add my salt and extract right now because it's a great time to incorporate that salt and my baking soda. So typically there's not leavener in a shortbread. You don't see baking soda or baking powder. Although some recipes do, this is just Dory Greenspan's creation creation and she just found that baking soda helped so baking soda is going to help with browning and crispiness that's why you see soda in cookies and baking powder for lift in cakes all right so i'm going to go in with my soda and salt and i'm going to do a half teaspoon of each and i'm doing a fleur de sel kind of a bigger grain oops don't do that all right salt soda y'all this is freaky because my voice is a few seconds behind and it's like there's someone else here but there's no one else here okay soda and salt and my extract so world peace cookie is a chocolate cookie so this is a chocolate shortbread with chunks of dark chocolate in it so you definitely want to think good chocolate for this cookie so I'm using Hershey cocoa and I'm using chocolate chips. It's still delicious. It's definitely, if you have like Valrona cocoa powder and beautiful dark chocolate, definitely use it. Um, but it works just as well with sort of those everyday ingredients that a lot of us have in the, in the cabinet. But I want to up the chocolate ante on this. So I'm going in with vanilla extract and chocolate extract. Another extract that would be great would be espresso. I've done that before. All right, I'm getting the hang of this, y'all. Just this, my second voice talking to me in my head. All right. That's my chocolate extract. 
And then I've got vanilla extract. Smells delicious. And then I want to get that moving again. Ooh, look. Yeah, so that's doing its thing now. So it's starting to form a ball and I'm seeing it become a cohesive color and less like big bits of butter in there. All right, so now we wanna go in with dry ingredients. So I need to do my flour, which is a cup and a fourth, and then a third cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. So I'm gonna get that in there. And then a cup and a fourth of my flour. Get that measured off properly. So a shortbread is a cookie that is typically things that you have in your kitchen is term in terms of like a um, base recipe. And then you can go crazy with customizing it. So butter, typically sugar and flour. This is all purpose flour. A lot of times you'll see rice flour in a shortbread cookie. And then in terms of shapes and sizes, they're all over the place. So if you think about Walker shortbread, those, those sticks or pie, sh pie shaped uh, wedge, wedges of shortbread with the, with the fork marks in it, or I do them as a roll, a log, and then I slice them. So they're slice and bake cookies. Okay, let me judge this. So this dough is different every single time I make it. It depends on the cocoa powder you use. It depends on your brand of butter. It depends on your temperature of butter. I've had everything from looking like just shards, like cottage cheese shards to a very wet dough. They have never been bad. Like no matter what they that dough does, they work. So this is very dry. It's very like fudgy. And uh, oh, and I always taste dough and batter because I'm not the best baker. And so this is the point where I go, oh, I forgot to put the egg. Oh, I forgot the whatever. So, but I also want to make sure my salt is where I want it to be because I think that's the key to shortbread is that little sh salty bite. So now I want to get this onto a piece of parchment and I'm gonna show you how to get the chocolate chips in here. Because if you do the chocolate chips, first of all, there's a dough. So if you do the chocolate chips in the, in the food processor, my other voice is confusing me. You're gonna cut them into smithereens. So you wanna fold them in. So sometimes this dough kind of needs to be kneaded. It's so dry and falling apart, but trust me, it, that the cookies are perfect every time. Parchment. Get this thing this out here. So I've got this dough, and what I want to do is get my chocolate chips in here. Oh, you're welcome, Cynthia. Thank you for joining me. And being there while I have this weird sensation of my voice twice in my head. Okay, so I'm just gonna work these chocolate chips in. So this dough is super weird because I made these earlier and this dough's cooperating and the last one didn't, which is so crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna press all these in and then 
this dough I could slice and bake right now. The other one I had to put in the freezer. But one thing about Dory's, Dory Greenspan is that she had a bakery with her son for about five years in New York. And her cookies, and the reason why she is the baking and cookie, baking and cookie queen is because her cookies were perfect and uniform every time. It's that perfectly round with the straight sides, shortbread, that's like her claim. And you can totally get there with these. So I was a little impatient with my earlier batch. So they're not as pretty, but they're still just as delicious. But you can totally get there with these. Okay, so what I do is I take this. So, and something that helps. So what she does, if you read her recipe, and if you're a cookie person, this is a must. This book is a must. So she makes... She takes this dough and divides it in half and makes two logs. So she's making little tiny cookies. I do one log and I probably get 18 or so cookies from here. But one thing that helps me is to take a bench scraper and pull back on this. And it helps pull that dough together and form a little bit more of a uniform log. I'm going to twist that. Now, that can live in your freezer for three months. Put it in a put it in a zip top bag. That can live in your freezer for three months. You can pull this out and cut, do slice and bake cookies with this, and just do a few at a time and throw it back in the freezer. You can also, I have also gifted this, the dough just like this, frozen giving it to my sister and sister-in-law at Christmas. They tuck it in their freezer and then they have cookies ready to go to bake. So um, that's our dough. And I'm going to tuck that in the freezer and I'm ha I have some in the fridge and I'm going to show you what happens when you cut this dough because it can be frustrating and you don't need to be frustrated. Okay. Let me clean up my mess a little. And then I'm going to pull the dough from the fridge. I don't know where to go with this. All right. On the counter it goes. All right. Now. So this is the dough that's been refrigerated. And this is the dough that didn't cooperate like what you just saw. But now it is completely firm. And I'm going to take my knife and cut slice and bake cookies. And so if you think about cutting this, especially from frozen, and you've got chocolate chips in here, it's like hitting a rock. And it's going to fall apart and you're going to be like, what is she talking about? And this didn't work. But all you do, well, of course, that cut perfectly. But all you would do if this broke apart, remember, these are 98.6 degrees. You just use the heat from your hand, press that back into a disc, and then those go on a sheet pan in a 350, 350 degree oven for 12 minutes. Set your timer for, tw for 12 minutes. Don't open the door, don't look. They won't look done. You're not gonna see browning, you can't. It's a brown cookie. And they're gonna feel soft, but they're gonna be perfect. 12 minutes, trust me. So I'm gonna keep cutting these because I'm gonna bake these for Greg later. But I'm hitting those chocolate chips and I'm just muscling through them. Does that help? So there those guys are. I'm gonna step away and go grab my sheet pan. coming back. Okay. So these go on the sheet pan and 350 degrees 
from Chilled, from Frozen, I'm back, um, 12 minutes, don't open the oven door, they won't look finished, and I promise they're going to be fine. So what about these guys, these ends? What, ha what do you do? A couple of choices. Eat it or put it on your sheet pan. These won't be your prettiest cookies. And again, you can eat them or you know what? It's all just fine. They're going to be delicious. Okay. So that is the world peace cookie, pretty classic chocolate shortbread. And definitely um, you have a few customizing options there. I guess if you wanted to go in with some nuts, but if you look up world peace cookies on the internet, you'll get literally millions of hits. One of the first cooking classes I did was most blogged about recipes. That was a fun class. And in that class, we did um, a tomato sauce from, sorry, um, Marcella Hazan's uh, tomato sauce. And we did world peace cookies. And I think we did the Zuni kitchen chicken, but it was this cookie years ago. And this was a while back. I, this was in 2012. And um, this was a very blogged about recipe. And for good reason, they're really, really delicious. Okay. So now we're going to move on to another shortbread. One page over in Dory's book are her vanilla sublays. So a sublé is a shortbread, but it does have egg yolks in it. So it's a super rich sublé, shortbread, and it you can think of it as a base recipe for lots of other flavors to come on top. So I have it ready to go in this guy. I went and got my other food processor bowl from the, from the shop. I'm not going to wash that in front of you guys. All right, let's get this on here. Okay, so now we're moving on to the sublé. This is a cookie that I taught my nieces and godchild. We do a cooking session every Thanksgiving after everyone's asleep watching football. We all come in the kitchen and I teach them something. And this is a cookie I taught them. And um, it starts with two sticks of cold butter and it has granulated sugar and powdered sugar. So this is a half cup granulated sugar and a quarter cup powdered sugar. And just like the other one, I'm gonna go ahead and come in now with my salt. There's no leavener in this cookie. Well, a yolk is a leavener, somewhat, um, but there's no baking soda in this shortbread. So I'm coming in with my salt and it's a half teaspoon, just like the other one. And again, I like the, that bite of salt in this cookie. So I went off script from Dory's recipe and I add in ground vanilla beans. So ground vanilla beans. So after extract is made, vanilla beans are, they per percolate in alcohol for I don't know, days. And so after all of that has been extracted from the vanilla bean, this bean pod is left over. And what they do is they dry them and they grind them. So you don't get a ton of flavor from them. You get sort of a essence, like an aroma, but what you get are those little black specks without having to fool with a vanilla bean, which are a little expensive. So here are ground vanilla beans. They smell lovely. They smell like vanilla. You cannot, is that working? Oh, there we go. All right, I don't know how to work this. Okay, so you couldn't use these in place of extract. I use them in addition to extract, again, for those little black specks. So this goes when I make in uh, creme brulee, ice cream, buttercream, anywhere I want to see those fancy black specks. So I'm going to go in with this now. I did maybe a quarter teaspoon. All right, so I've got butter, 
sugar, powdered sugar, salt. The salt's in here now. And my vanilla beans. I need a lid. So now I'm at that cottage cheese stage where cannot, sorry guys. All right. So I've still got pretty big pieces of cold butter in there. And so I want to take this a little bit further to get it more cohesive. Okay, and then we're gonna go in with egg yolks here. Oh, here we go. So now it's starting to catch. And I'm gonna add my egg yolks. Coming back. Three egg yolks. And then after I get those incorporated, then we'll add our flour. Okay, so we're about to go in with our flour. One of my favorite things to do is make a savory shortbread. Lily Courtney, um, who teaches cooking classes with me, she does some pretty amazing savory shortbreads. And the way you use them is kind of like a cracker. So you put them on a cheese board, you drink, you have them with wine. Um, really, you know, on the side of a soup or salad. Um, but shortbread is completely customizable and you can go totally the savory way. All right, I need my flour for these sublays and it's two cups. So let me go with my two cups of flour. Get that leveled off. One, I'll do one at a time. So I get it nice and incorporated. Gorgeous. And then one more. Measuring my flour the proper way, as Dory would want me to. She's adorable, by the way. If you can ever catch her on a podcast or any uh, TV appearances, she's delightful. She knows everything about baking. And she's my pretty much my go-to for baking. I, I when I'm confused about something, when I'm searching something, I go to a, a Dory website or a post. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to taste, but I'm going to check my recipe here. I've got my butter, sugar, powdered sugar, salt, egg yolks, flour, vanilla. Mm. Delicious. Okay. Here's the fun part. Let me get rid of this. And this one's cooperating better than my earlier batch as well. I think my butter was colder. Okay. So I need this. I need this. this dough. It's gorgeous. Scrape this out of here. So this one's a little softer and this one does benefit from a chill in the, I would go freezer for about 30 minutes and then you'll be able to handle it really well. 
So I'm super impatient with this dough, with this dough, and I always end up with like a football shaped cookie because I'm too impatient to get this a perfect circle. And I would probably do myself some favors by chopping this in half and doing it in two batches. I don't have time for that. All right. All right. So look, I'm doing it. How cool is that? So we had a lot of fun, me and my nieces and godchild making these because they like this part the best. And um, also the squeezing of the ends is going to help you get a uniform-ish uh, tube here. So where's my towel? But that goes in the fridge. Again, there's your gift to hand off to someone to bake. And um, that lives in your freezer for three months. And you can just slice off, make a few at a time. Okay, I've got one in the fridge. And when I'll show you the great thing about Sublays. Coming back. All right, let's see. Let me grab this one. So I've got... Oh, espresso sugar, got espresso sugar, vanilla latte sugar, vanilla sugar. So this is where a larger sugar, if you have a sanding sugar um, that you may have bought for cookies. And that's what Dory, that shiny, can we see that? That shiny sanding sugar is what she uses. Turbinado sugar would work well here. But what we want to do, you guys, I did a good job. Look how good that looks. Okay, I'm going to do espresso sugar. There, does that help? All right. So I'm going to roll this on the edges. So that's going to give that crunch on the edge, which I love. Now Dory does sandy sugar, sanding sugar. After she slices them, she does sanding sugar on the top. I'm all for that. Um, we do it on the edges, it makes it really pretty. We have a blueberry sugar, we have a strawberry sugar, and it's just super pretty. Okay, now, Slice these. Let me get my sheet pan ready. Loud noises, sorry. Just to bake a few of these up. Oh, they're slicing perfectly. And what happens with the sablé? So with typical shortbread, like the chocolate shortbread that doesn't have the egg yolk in it, it really stays, that perfectly straight side will hold. Whereas these kind of give way on the edges, but they're, they're still really, really pretty. We make sablés a lot in cooking classes, like it's our go-to. So because it become, can become so many things. So we've done sablés where we folded in ground chai tea, which is pretty amazing, a chai tea shortbread. We take these and we'll crumble them and we'll make little mini parfaits or mini trifles where then the customers have an opportunity to make custard and maybe a quick jam and some whipped cream. So they're a good all purpose cookie to learn about because it's a good standalone cookie. It's a good template for other flavors, but it's also a good base for other toppings and custards and things like that. So there's a lot of learning opportunities 
uh, when you start with a shortbread. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Here's what these guys look like. I'm sorry my little zoomy camera isn't working today. Aren't those pretty? Those are gonna be lovely with that espresso sugar. That's a good contrast. Okay, so now let me show you how they baked up. Hang on. Let's clean up a little bit. So I hope that you all are planning to grab things out of your pantry right now to make these. I'm guessing that a lot of you could throw these together tonight. All right, let's make that as our little base. I'll be right back. Oh, I need this. So first up are our world peace cookies. Get that out of the way. Let me move that over here. Okay. So I was super impatient. I didn't chill them for very long. I just. Oh, Amy's instead of making cookie uh, pizza dough tonight, she's going to make cookies. Good plan. Okay. So I didn't chill these. The dough was soft. I was slicing them and kind of pushing them back together. So they don't have those beautiful. 90 degree straight sides that they could have, like this batch will do, um, but they're still delicious. But they're sturdy and crispy. Let me get the best looking ones. Sturdy and crispy. Oh my gosh. Come on, y'all. All right. So these are my daughter's favorite cookies. She's my chocolate person. And she loves those. I, my son doesn't like chocolate. He'll eat an Oreo, but that's about it. The Sablais are his favorite cookie. He loves a sugary, buttery cookie. So these Sablais, you can see where the edges on the bottom. Oh, I wish my thing was working. Oh, I did it. Okay. So I'm going to hold on to my parchment so they so, don't slide off. But you can see where the edges gave way and started to spread just a little bit. Um, and then the top stays sturdy, but I love these Sablés. So again, they lift right off, so pretty. I did vanilla sugar on the edges of these, so they're not as, uh, distinct in color as the espresso sugar will be, but oh my gosh, look at this one. That oh, looks like the perfect bite. Those are beautiful. So two different shortbreads, both came together in your food processor. You can totally use your KitchenAid. My daughter does these by, home, by hand, um, but that food processor is what I love to use. And lovely shortbread cookies, dough that lives in your freezer, just so you can make just as many as you'd like. And you've got a completely customizable recipe that um, might you might be able to pull together tonight. So let's have a cookie. I'm going to do chocolate. This was fun. Mm. They're like, so chocolatey, crispy. Mm. They're kind of fudgy in the middle. I love that little bite of salt. Mm. So good. I did roll these and just um, granulated sugar. Just so I got a little crunch on the outside. So good. So good, you guys. Make some cookies. This was fun. I will be back tomorrow to cook with you guys. 
I love you all. Thank you for joining me. Take care. Take care of everyone around you and stay well. Thanks, guys. Bye.